welcome to another church music tutorial. Uh, today we wanted to do something different and we wanted to talk about using auto accompaniment or you know using an arranger keyboard in the church. And the reason for that is very simple. Normally not all churches have a full-fledged band playing like we spoke about especially most regional churches and in several cases, there are times when there's only one musician available, or not many. Or maybe you have just been coming into the church to fill up for no musicians being available, and you would like to use whatever is available in church to the maximum. So that is where today's song comes from, I mean, or today's uh, tutorial comes from. It is Father Berkman's Talai uh, Gulwiyaratum song. And the song has a distinct rock or a soft rock vibe to it. So with that in mind, I thought I would actually use this occasion to test out an arranger keyboard as it were. Now arranger keyboards give you a lot of versatility when it comes to playing in churches. You can use just the piano tone for example and go Now this works, at the same time assume that your drummer hasn't come in to church today for whatever reason and with a song like this you can't really just play the piano and get the people moving. If you think about it, the keyboardist is the link between the, uh, how do I put it, the ch church's congregation and the worship leader and if that is the case you will have to do everything that is in your power to ensure that the church worship and praise experience is the very best that it can be and that depends on you as the musician. So, what do you do? You decide, okay, fine, I'm going to use the keyboard, I'm going to use the auto accompaniment section. And yes, you can probably just go with the drums. And yes, that gives you, yes, that gives you enough of a rock vibe to it. And you can play along with it with the piano. Now while this is possible, these keyboards give you a lot more. For example, it gives you an entire band playing alongside you. So if I were to play the same song again, listen to this. See, there, there you have it. You have a bass guitar player, you have multiple acoustic and rhythm guitar players, all of them working together as a band, the band that you're missing in the first place. So this becomes a very easy way for churches to get their worship experience or their praise and worship up and running and get, gain sufficient traction because whether you like it or not, like I said, the congregation needs that little bit of a push into getting the getting there, getting to worship the Lord together with, you know, the worship leader and the musician. So in that case, I would like to give you some ideas in terms of how you would like to play this. Now, for example, most musicians try to prefer something like this, a pad chord on the left or the chord recognition point on the left. So they use three fingers. So this is D, for example, and A and B minor. These are all the chords that I'm using for this song. But at the same time, if you wanted to come up with that little bit more vibe to it. So for example, if I play the song like this. You don't get the punch that you would otherwise get with somebody who is playing the piano. So. Um, Ever since college, or for the last 10, 15 years, what I have been doing is try to play along with the full keyboard because that gives you a lot of variations. You get a lot more power and you also get 
to do what a bass guitarist would do in the sense if a song goes like this from G to D you'll probably use the F sharp uh, bass note after G and then the E note you're basically doing a, re a reducing run or a increasing run all of these help when it comes to coming up with the best music experience that you can provide for your worship leader on one side and for the congregation on the other. So if you use the entire keyboard for chord recognition, what happens is you get a lot more traction. Like I said, I can use the entire style along with it. And at the same time, you can set up the keyboard to use your chord recognition so that, you know, it takes the lowest note as the primary bass note for the particular chord, which is what I've done. Otherwise, it would sound like this. So each of these things matter because if you're trying to do what, or if as the keyboardist you join along and do what the basses would ideally do for a song, that song sounds that much nicer. And like I said in my very first video, whether the congregation sees that or not, there are musicians in that group, definitely. And all of them look forward to seeing what exactly you can provide to them. So with this in mind, uh, with this song, you have a pre-chorus, that is the Talaigal Vuyaratum part. After that, there is the chorus which goes, Yarin, oh sorry, Yarin the Raja, Magimayin Raja. So that is the pre chorus. Magimayin Raja, Magimayin Raja. So this is how the song goes. Every verse, every chorus, and even the verses end like this. Da, 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 da. So each of these things are things that you would do better with a full keyboard chord recognition. So that is what I've been doing. And as far as the verse goes, it goes... <laughs> basic chords and if you listen to the original track which we will give a link of in the song in the video link below so you can also listen to it and try your own versions your own variations of the song but when you're doing this what you realize is the next part of the song the second part of the verse goes <laughs> Sorry. Now, when you do this, you realize that there is a more melodic sort of a theme to this part of the song. So this would sound very nice if you were to use a, chord, a pad chord. Something like this. Imagine this, you have the style going in the background and you have this on the foreground. So you're giving some variation to the song. Something that the people immediately notice and that goes straight over to the prime, the chorus again. Like I said, Then we go back to the pre-chorus before going into the next verse. So now I would like to play this song for you in its entirety. But before I do that, one last lesson would be, keyboards like this, for example, come with four mains and a variation uh, and a break. So the main variations go generally go like this. The first variation is usually the softest. In this case, because it's a rock song or the theme is rock, the style is going to be quite heavy to begin with, but you can, if you listen carefully, you can notice the differences. I'll play it for you. This is the first variation. I usually use this for the pre-chorus. 
And the second time I use the pre-chorus, what I do is I usually go for the second heavier variation. This really helps me get a better, get the people going again. And when it comes to the verse, for example, can you see the difference between the previous verse and this? And for the final chorus, So all of these variations, if you try to use these variations carefully and judiciously, and also a lot of these buttons double up as fill-ins. So when you do all this, when you try to get this as perfect as possible, for example, this is a four count beat. So your beat goes one, two, three, four, the song starts in the first count. So naturally, when you're trying to use the fill-ins, if you use the full four bars for it, it's going to sound very beautiful. And Yamaha also allows you to open a, uh, uh, how do I put it, a fill-in and stop it midway. Listen to this. So you can start and stop it. When you get more comfortable with the keyboard, you're going to do a lot more. So, uh, yes, the final lesson. With a Yamaha keyboard, especially when you want to play for a, with the full keyboard, one thing I realize is very important is that the keyboard is a very light keyboard, the key bed. So you would need to mix yourself in such a manner that you know your left hand isn't always overpowering your right. Also, Yamaha primarily uses the PSR series as a home keyboard. So this means if you're uh, routing this out to uh, the keyboards via output uh, straight to your PA, you need to equalize the output of the keyboard a little bit because what you hear on the keyboard speakers is not what you hear out on the PA. So these are my final tips for this song. Now we can attempt the song in its fullness. <laughs> 